Amen. Amen. If you'll turn with me to the book of Philippians, the third chapter. Philippians chapter 3. And we're going to start reading from verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, there's one thing that I'm going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to forget those things which are behind me, and I'm going to reach forth unto those things which are before me. God help us to forget yesterday and reach for tomorrow. Man, I feel that in the Holy Ghost. I want you to have that impression in your spirit. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if in anything you shall be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Let's pray. God, we thank you tonight for your power that we feel in this house. I thank you, God, for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy. God, anoint this church and these brothers and sisters, this pastor and his wife, elders in the church. Let there be such an anointing in this building tonight. And let your blessings flow with that anointing. God, I appreciate who you are and what you've done already in these services. But God, I believe much greater is ahead. We give you all the praise in the lovely name of Jesus. And the church says, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to preach tonight from this thought, taking charge. <clears throat> Amen. One thing I want to clarify, and I did this recently at the home church. I Years ago, I was attending a, a minister's and wife's retreat in above Sonora uh, in California. <clears throat> and the speaker at that particular meeting was J.T. Pugh, and uh, J.T. Pugh was an exception to the rule. He was a teacher. He was a, a man, I believe, after God's own heart. He preached powerful messages, and he will forever, ever, uh, his ministry, his messages will forever be imprinted upon the corridors of the apostolic truth. <clears throat> Amen. And he preached a message uh, that I have not forgotten, and it has gone with me all the days of my ministry. And the title of that message was Anointed But Not Blessed. And uh, if you've never listened to it, you need to look it up and, 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 and listen to that message. It was powerful. It was dynamic. Well, as I uh, begin to mature in my ministry and over the years, God began to teach me. <clears throat> and show me and establish upon my heart uh, what that really meant. <clears throat> because uh, for years I tried to decipher and tried to figure out exactly what did Brother Pew mean. <clears throat> and over the last few years I realized that there is such a value in studying and listening and taking notes and, and praying about the things of God and, and knowing what they, that what the words that are spoken really mean. And uh, so uh, as I begin to study and pray on this over a uh, season of time, I realize that you can be anointed by the things of God, but still not be blessed. <laughs> Amen. Now, let me explain that before I go into this preaching. One thing is that oftentimes we, we come to church in an apostolic church uh, 
we sing a fast song, and the beat gets to going, the drums get to playing, the piano gets to beating, uh, the bass player gets to playing on that bass and getting with it. And uh, we feel such a, a powerful move of God. And what that is, is that that is God's anointing beginning to move through these instruments. Yes. Uh, and it's a good thing. It's a powerful thing. And a lot of times people don't realize this, that uh, the word of God, the Bible says, his word shall not come back void. Amen. It, it doesn't matter who preaches or teaches. Uh, they may be a wretched, no good sinner. If they use the word of God, something's going to happen. Anointing will go with the word of God. <clears throat> I remember setting in parties before I came to God, and it seemed like there was always somebody in that party that all of a sudden they wanted to bring God up. <clears throat> Here they are about stoned out of their mind, Elder, and they want to talk about God. And I used to think about that, uh, and they'd be get, begin to quote scriptures, and they would say, I used to go to Sunday school, and uh, I used to go to church, and my parents uh, went, and, and they would talk about things uh, and scriptures, and, and I would be fascinated by it, uh, even though I was just a sinner. You see, there is an anointing that goes along with every word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I would feel that anointing even though I didn't recognize it. I didn't know what it was, but it was there, elder. It was there. Every time the scripture is spoken, his anointing is there. But the problem is, is unless we act upon the anointing and unless we surrender to it completely, we will not get the blessings of God. Come on, we just can't sit there and do a little uh, foot patting and a hand clapping. No, we've got to live, we've got to walk, and we've got to talk what this Word of God says. So when you feel good about what's being sung or what's being spoken, church, don't just think that that is enough. No, I don't want just the anointing. I don't want just the good feeling. I want the blessings of God. I said, church, we want the anointing, but we want the blessings to flow with it. Amen. That means walk the walk, talk the talk, live the life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we must understand that in all things. To assume. Amen. 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 The word charge is to assume control or responsibility. I want God to know. We want God to know that we are going to take charge over the issues and the things of our life. I'm not going to come to church and sit here and let the devil work me over every service. No, when I come to the house of God, when you get up in the morning, when you go to work of a day, when you go to bed of a night, you need to assume the responsibility of being a child of God. You need to have a confidence. Amen. Don't sit there and feel sorry for yourself. Amen. To take charge is to have the qualities of a forceful leader. Mm. Hallelujah. What is a forceful leader? It's a man of God. It's a prayer warrior. It's a Sunday school teacher. It's a pastor. It's a youth leader. It is somebody that's going to say, listen, tonight I'm going to have a great church. Tonight I'm going to be forceful. I'm going to get my blessing. I'm going to get what God wants me to have. I'm headed somewhere, so be patient, but I feel this in God. It also means to assume command or custody. Hallelujah. Think about that. When I take charge of my life in the Holy Ghost, I take command and I take custody over the things of my life. I can remember many times I've sat in counseling sessions where I have heard leaders, I have heard child children of God that have complained about what is going wrong. And in my mind, something screams and says, why don't you get up and take 
take charge over this situation. Take command over that spirit that's trying to affect you. I believe that God wants his church to assume a command and a custody over their walk with God in this life. There are other words for taking charge. Of course, one of those is commanding. Another one is compelling. Huh. You know what? The Bible says to go to the highways and byways and compel them. You better study that word compel out. It doesn't mean come out there and say, will you please, pretty please, sugar, with sugar on top, come to church? No. Compel means you're going to go out there and almost rope them and tie them up and say, get to the house of God. That means, come on, take some authority. Take a command over the vessels and the instruments that come against your ability to witness. I mean, God is waiting for his church to get a compelling attitude and spirit. Amen. Another word is convincing. Too many Christians, if you're not careful, you say, hey, we'd like you to come to church, man. We have good church, but you're not very convincing. I was at a restaurant here in Indianapolis, Indiana, about three weeks ago, an old missionary friend of mine, I don't know if your pastor will remember him, Brother Laulu Will, John Hattabaw. And he used he started uh, over 62 uh, works in Brazil with B Brother Benny DeMerchant, and he was one of the most uh, profound missionaries of that era and that season. He attended my church. I was his pastor for four years. Uh, and uh, so I was there in Indiana, and that's where he lives now. And I met him at a restaurant and at Cracker Barrel, of all places. And we began to talk, and, man, we had a good fellowship time, and we had such a good uh, a time of, of reminiscing what God has done and how God has done it for us. And while we were sitting there, uh, this young lady, she was a waitress, uh, she walked up to by the table and she asked us if everything was okay. And we said, yes. And as she turned to leave, Brother Hannibal, he said, young lady, she stopped. She looked at him and I grinned because I knew what was coming. He said, young lady, are you really happy? You should have seen the look on her face, the countenance. She had a smile. It was a, it was a fake smile, but it was a smile. And, and when he asked her that, her countenance changed, her face dropped. She looked at him, she looked at me, and I smiled, and I said, sis, he's for real. She said, no, I'm not happy. He said, I'll tell you what, I want to let you know that there is a God that loves you, amen, and that will give you joy and happiness. You see, we've got to convince people that this is real. We've got to let people understand that what we have in God is genuine. It's not fake. It's something that will put joy unspeakable in your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He exchanged numbers, and he was going to invite her and take her to church. I haven't talked to him about that. Many times I've seen how children of God seem so unconvincing. You go to restaurants, you go wherever, and you got such a sad, woe-be-gone look. Come on, we have the Holy Ghost. We have the power of Jesus. Let people see it. Convince them that what you got is really real. Hallelujah. Another word for taking charge is dynamic. Woo. Man, this should not be some dull, dead, dry thing in your life. Make it dynamic. Well, how do I do that, uh, Pastor Fisher? I'll tell you how. By making every service, every time you get a chance, exciting. Friend, I know problems are there, and so does God. But God has given us his spirit. Let's get excited about it. Let's get dynamic about it. Amen. 
our youth group in Modesto many years ago, we were dynamic. We were crazy. We drove our poor pastor crazy. We, we had pews, uh, pastor, and, uh, and, and us young people. When we shouted, now I'm going to say this, and I don't mean to offend, but he told me the pulpit was un unfettered this morning. And I'll tell you what, we got such dignified shouts now. Come on. I, I'm guilty of it, but I'm getting old, so I got a little more of an excuse. Back in those days, Elder, those sisters would wear their hair up. They'd have about 150 pounds of bobby pins in their hair. And when they get to shouting, their hair would go every direction. You had to duck because they would slap you upside the head. Amen. We exploded in the Holy Ghost. We got dynamic in what God gave us. Now we get dignified. Man, I tell our sisters at the church, please, 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 let go and let God. Amen. I tell the brothers and sisters, come on, let's let the Holy Ghost flow through us. Let, let's take charge of, 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 of our spirit and our life. Let's take charge. And when God begins to move, let's get dynamic with it. Come on. Hallelujah. I believe that God wants this church to be a leader in this community, in your world worship but you gotta get dynamic to do it <laughs> Woo. another word for taking charge is energetic <laughs> you said one of your brothers your energizer battery or something this morning I can't remember who that was come on we gotta be energetic not just dynamic, but we got to give it everything we got. Come on, when I come to church, I may be fighting the devil all day, but tonight the devil has no dominion. I said the devil has no dominion in this church. It's time for every young man, every sister, every brother to take charge with a dynamic, energetic praise unto God. You know what? We got to we got to captivate the attention of the angels and God of heaven. I said we got to captivate it and we got to subdue the spirits of this world that comes against the church. How do we do that? By standing up and giving God the highest praise, the greatest worship that we can give him in every service. Hallelujah. I want to be a take charge individual. And I feel it, brother. I don't want to be somebody that's going to be pushed around by the devil or the spirits of this world. I want to come to the house of God and let the energizing power of the Holy Ghost, amen, create in me a powerful, energetic, dynamic move of his spirit. One day, there was a man... That was harassed and picked on by a woman. Sorry, sisters. But this woman wasn't a normal woman. Amen. She was an evil individual. And uh, this man has seen great things happen. Matter of fact, he's seen fire come down from heaven and consume the sacrifice of bullock and all the rocks and the waters and the stones. There had been a drought for many years. By his word. And uh, when he got done, listen to this now. When not only did he defeat and prove uh, the enemy wrong and the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the grove wrong, the Bible says that he ordered it and they killed every one of them. Aren't you glad God don't work that way no more? There are a lot of dead people in this world. <laughs> oh, come on now. But he did. And the exciting thing, what God did after that, and that man of God, the Bible says he went over and found him a place to pray. He found a place to talk to God. He began to talk to God. He looked over at a servant, and I won't draw this out. He said, but I want you to go check over yonder. Tell me what you see. The man went over there one, two, three, four, five, six times. He see nothing. He kept coming back and say, oh, Elijah, I don't see a thing. He said, go back one more more time. He went
went back and he come running back. He said, I see the cloud the size of a man's hand. He was energetic. He was dynamic. And the man of God said, you better go tell Ahab, get in his chariot because I hear the abundance and the sound of rain. Something is about to happen in this city, in this church. There's a cloud the size of a man's hand. Woo! Elijah, man, he told him, you better tell him. Ahab, he listened to the man of God. You know, when you listen to the man of God, things begin to happen. Ahab got in that chariot. He took off toward his castle. It was 20 miles away. And the Bible says while he was on his way, the rains began to come. And the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord came upon Elijah. He took off running. He was energetic. He outran the chariot and the horses. It's time this church outruns the forces of hell. Woo! Take charge over the things that have been affecting you. Whew. Another word is forcible. You know what? I've seen it in apostolic churches where we think that we got to be a bunch of timid cowards. In my whole ministry... I've probably been involved in casting out demons out of about five people. Now, that's many, many years. Thank God not many people are possessed by a demon. But when they are, whoo, or when a spirit comes into the house of God, it may not be possessing anybody, but it may be trying to affect you. Come on. It'll cause rebellion. It'll cause a bad attitude. It'll cause you to rise up against the man of God. It'll cause you to rise up against the church. You know what you need to do? You need to stand up and get a forcible attitude and say, oh no, not the night devil, not tonight devil. I am going to rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We've got to take control, take charge, take command, get energetic, get dynamic, be forcible against the foe and the spirit that wars against the church. Hallelujah. He says you've got to be strong. Man, if you've got the Holy Ghost and you're praying and you're fasting, you're not an apostolic sissy. I don't want to cross no lines here, but I, I tell our church, if you're not careful, you're going to be a sissy lala. Oh, come on, brother. Come on, sisters. You don't want to be some sissy. No, no. You want to be a warrior. You want to be a fighter. You want to toughen up. You want to pray up. You want to run up. You want to be strong for the kingdom of God. Take charge. Hallelujah. I don't know about here, but there, I've got a half a dozen young men in the church, you know, that 20 to 30 year old, and they're always going to the gym. I know. And it amazes me. They come back, and I, I got to mimic them. They walk back like this. And I look at them, and I said, My goodness, what's wrong with you? Well, I just came back from the gym. Does that gym make you walk that way? What is it? It's the walk that I'm tough. I'm strong. And they want the world to know, look at me. And they think that they pumped a little iron, that they're strong. Let me tell you what. There is not one man that ever comes from the gym that is as strong as a prayer warrior, that is as strong as a child of God, that walks away from an apostolic church and feels the glory of God. Listen, if they can swagger like they're bad, why can't we, amen, begin to dance and praise God? Why? Because we just came from a turned on church service. You walk into the restaurant at their service, you shouldn't go sneaking in quietly. 
No, hold your head up. Come on, get energetic. Smile. Let the Holy Ghost speak to you. Let the Holy Ghost anoint you. Be strong in the Lord. Take charge over the spirits that are trying to destroy you. Got to hurry. Amen. Be vigorous. It kind of goes along with energetic. You know, the Bible says, whatsoever your hands find to do, do with all your might. Well, tonight, our hands should be praising God. Our feet should be praising God. Our voice should be praising God. Tonight, right now, this is our moment. The devil doesn't like this kind of an atmosphere. I said, no, the devil doesn't like apostolics that take charge. He doesn't like it because you are praising Jesus right now. He doesn't like it, like it because you're becoming strong in the Holy Ghost and the wiles of the devil that have tried to beat you down all week long. They are fleeing out of this building. And finally, he said, be aggressive. I don't know what it is or why so many people think that we got to walk around like a timid little wimp. Keep our mouth shut. Now, we got to use wisdom. My friend... And they want to talk about their party and they want to talk about their sexual actions. I'm going to talk about my Jesus. Amen. And they want to talk about what they done last Friday night. I'm going to tell them what we done Sunday night. Amen. Listen, we've got to get aggressive in the Holy Ghost. We've got to get aggressive in amen in what we have burning inside of us. What is that doing? It's taking charge of the circumstance. Whew. I don't like this one. I'm not sure I even want to say anything about it. <laughs> Taking charge is also is a type of being violent. <laughs> well, how do I be violent? And the Holy Ghost. Man, you need to be like old Joseph Dominguez. He used to get up and says, I'm going to zook at the devil. I said, what? Zuka, the devil man. Portuguese, they said, I'm going to punch the devil. I'm going to sock the devil. What does that mean? It means don't you sit there and let those problems beat you down for the rest of your life. You need to get up and give God the praise. We're not here to be a bunch of spiritual weaklings. We are here by the authority, amen, and the power of our great God to take charge over those things that try to consume us. Be courageous. A while back we had during COVID, <laughs> whatever that means. Trust me, I'm so sick of the COVID garbage. Don't, don't be offended. I... We were careful. We did all this and that there. And I finally said, enough is enough. And people would call me and say, Pastor Fisher, can we come to church? Even though the city said and the state said, only 10%. You remember 10% of what we had was 40 people. And I said, okay, okay. I said, well, listen, I don't have the door locked. Y'all just do what you want to do. Kind of, you know, park in the back. Use a little wisdom. <laughs> Next thing you know, we had a hundred, then a hundred and fifty, and I'm going, oh Jesus, don't let the police come in. Hallelujah. But you know what it was? We begin to have church. Amen. The Methodists, the Baptists, the different people from different churches in town, their churches shut down. Those people started coming to the church. They was hungry. Listen to me. Let's get courageous. Let's don't be a bunch of cowards to worship God and let the world know who we are. Be fierce. Should you go up and shake their hand? How you doing? Okay. Oh. Are you sure you're okay? Come on. You know what? Some of y'all need to learn to get that Holy Ghost fierce look about you and say, man, pastor, great today. 
Get that look on your face. I'll tell you what, the devil cannot read your mind. He cannot read what's going on in your heart. He can only see if he's struck home by your countenance and the way you look and the way you act. You know what you need to do? It doesn't matter if you're fighting the devil or not. Get a confident, fierce attitude. Devil's been bombarding you all week, and you're sitting there tonight, and you're not sure if you're going to make it tomorrow. You know what you need to do? You need to get up and run around this building and do a little dance for Jesus. Why? You're going to let him know you have not taken charge over my life. I'm taking charge over you and everything you bring against me. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Be firm. I like that old song, Elder. It says, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I'm not going to try to sing much. My voice is rotten right now, but, but he says, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to be firm. And when all hell comes against me and every spirit tries to destroy me, I'm a going back to church. I'm going to get on the front row. I'm going to get in the back row. And I'm going to praise God. I'm going to take charge over my trial and over my difficulty. I am not going to back up. I am not going to quit. I'm taking charge of who I am. And finally, he said, you need to be intelligent about what you have. How do I get intelligent? Read the word of God. Take notes when the pastor or anybody else teaches or preaches. Pay attention. You're going through a situation and the pastor gets up there and he says, well, God has told me to let you know that everything's going to be all right. He told me to tell you that where two or three are gathered in my name, he's going to be in the midst. Take your charge. Take, 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 a, take understanding. Put it in your brain. Let the intelligence of the Holy Ghost, amen, put that in your spirit. Why? Because tomorrow you may fight a battle. You never dreamed you would have to fight. And then all of us sudden when you're under the gun all of a sudden a spirit of take charge gets a hold of you and the intelligence of the word of God rises up how did Jesus defeat the devil when he was at that season of temptation after 40 days of fasting he didn't go up there and sing some special song forgive me I love special songs no, no, no. We, we're going to have worship and songs. And, and they, they, they create an atmosphere in the house of God. Hallelujah. For us to preach and, and to worship God. But no, what did he do? He used the intelligence of the word of God. For it is written. Listen to me. We need to let the devil know by our intelligence, amen, of being able to quote some scriptures. Friend, God doesn't expect you to quote the whole Bible like some do. But my land, you should so know enough of it. I hope I don't get in trouble here. Too many of our young people and too many of our middle-aged people, they can tell me every player that plays uh, in the basketball and the baseball and the football. They can tell me how many touchdowns, uh, how many home runs, uh, and what their batting average is. But you ask them to quote a scripture? I don't know anything. That is why we struggle. That is why apostolics struggle. It's time to take charge and begin to learn a few scriptures so that when the devil comes against us, we can use that Bible, we can use that scripture to take charge in an intelligent way against the enemy of our soul. Woo. The writer in Philippians expresses that there is one thing that he does. I got to hurry. 
Not because I'm trying to keep in a time schedule. Because I'm getting old and I'm getting wore out. <laughs> oh. Now that hurt, brother. <laughs> Woo! Take charge. That's right. He said, there's one thing that I do. I'm not going to let my mistakes of yesterday control me anymore. Listen to me, church. If you're brand new, if you haven't been here very long, quit worrying about what you did last month, last year. What you need to think about is, listen, I'm going to do this one thing. I'm going to forget my mistakes that I've given to Jesus. They're past. They're under the blood. I've been forgiven of them. And I know there's a bunch of new ones here tonight. You need to understand that your pastor will lead you. He'll show you. He'll, he'll, he'll direct you. Amen. But what he needs is for you to take charge and forget your yesterday and start to build on your tomorrows. Woo. He said, I'm going to reach forth to the things before me. I've seen this in apostolic people. They get the Holy Ghost. They do good for a week or two or three. Then all of a sudden the devil may reminds them or the family reminds them. Come on now. Family says, why do you think you're so spiritual? You ain't no better than us. Well, in the flesh, maybe I am not, but in the spirit. I made my mistakes, and, and, and that's okay. And I've asked God to forgive me. I'll pay the price in any way that God wants. But guess what? Guess what, family? And I had to tell my family this. I had to go back to my high school after I got the Holy Ghost. Amen. It between my, 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 what's that? Sophomore and junior year, and I came back to, to school, and I tell you what, I, I walked in, I said, no more sports, no more this, no more that, and, and everybody's saying, what's wrong with you? And I'm not against sports, but I knew I couldn't do what I did before, no more partying, and those guys would ask me to the parties, the football team and everybody say, hey, we're going to have this party over here. I said, no, I can't do it no more. What's wrong with you? And I'd pull out my little Bible that I had. Hey, and I'd carry it with me down the hallways of that Thomas Downey High School. I'll tell you what, there was 4,000 students in that high school. And I'll tell you one thing, Pastor, when I walked down those hallways and all those people that I hung around with, they seen me with that little Bible. You'd think it was the parting of the Red Sea. They'd move out of my way and I'd walk through there. I wasn't ashamed. I took charge over my sin. I took charge over my past. And God is talking to some of you here tonight. I remember walking into a class named, a man named Ralph, young man. Man, we hung out quite a bit together. He said, hey, we got this party Friday night. I said, Ralph, you know, I don't do that no more. He said, man, come on now. Don't be square. Don't be goofy. Come on to the party. I said, Ralph, let me tell you one more time. I got the Holy Ghost at church camp over the summer. He looked at me with a funny look on his face. Then I got baptized in Jesus' name. And I said, Ralph, I'm not the young man that I used to be. I'm no longer a party, a drinker, a troublemaker. I'm going to church. Amen. I've taken charge over my life. And I'll tell you what, Ralph never bothered me again. If you'll let the devil know tonight who you are and what you've done for Jesus and what you're going to do, the devil will not bother you anymore. Hallelujah. You got to reach forth to the things that are before you. He said, I'm going to press toward the mark. I never dreamed I'd be a preacher. You wouldn't know it now, but I used to be kind of shy and quiet. 
I really was. I'd go to a youth gathering, Pastor, and be 40, 50 youth at Sister Bonnie Kettner's house there, Modesto, elder sister. We'd have tacos, and man, they'd all be cutting up, laughing, and going on. And I'd sit there the whole evening, maybe say 10 words. Not no more, but anyway. <laughs> but oh, one thing I began to realize we'd sit in those meetings, and I feel this, and I feel to impress this upon somebody here tonight. We'd be sitting there. And through the, throughout the evening, all of a sudden, something would come over me. And this is what began to make me and what I needed to be. And this is what God was trying to impress upon me. And he's trying to impress upon brothers and sisters in this church. Amen. I'd sit there and all of a sudden, Pastor, I'd feel an urge to pray. And they'd be cutting up and laughing and going on. There's nothing wrong with that. I'd get up and say, hey, I got to go. Well, they got used to that idea. They knew I was headed to the church, to the basement of the church. And I would go there. And two or three others would go with me every time. And we begin to pray sometimes till 2 or 3 in the morning. Listen to me. We've got to press toward the mark, the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus. Quit letting the devil beat you down. What made my ministry was not my ability to talk or not talk. I'm not as eloquent. I got a lot of hillbilly in me. I can't say all these eloquent words. I, now, that maybe have been a good eloquent word, the word eloquent. I say can't. I say don't you know. Man, I got a bunch of teachers in my church, and they just cringe when I get to preaching sometimes. <laughs> but I don't care. I want to get the point across. I want to take charge of my life. Oh, come on, saints of God. You in this church here at Souls Harbor, God has put you here for a reason. God has put you here for a purpose. Every one of you here tonight, you are here because God ordained you to be here. Whether you're new or whether you're old, it doesn't matter. You got a pastor, you got a church, you got a pastor's wife, you got a praise team, you've got leadership, you've got a church that's taking charge against the forces of hell in this city. I want to take charge of the prize. Page one. <laughs> uh, I had to say that out. Psalm 62 and 6 says, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. I woke up this morning with my mind staying on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind staying on Jesus. Why? Because he's my rock. He's my shield. He's my shelter. Oh, why? Come on, church. He's the one that'll be defending you in the difficulties of life. And because of that, I shall not be moved. A rock is a solid, strong thing. It's hard to break. It's something that cannot just be broken with a simple task. I thank God that my life is built upon a rock. Aren't you glad that the rock of ages is the foundation of who you are? You used to be building your house upon the sand. You used to live in the world. But tonight, you've taken charge over the failures of your life. You've given them to Jesus. He he is your rock. He is your strong and mighty tower. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Matthew 16 and 18, it states that it is upon this rock 
I will build my church. It's upon this truth. It's upon this knowledge. It's upon this understanding. I'm going to build a church. And the gates of hell are not going to prevail against it. Oh, come on. Come on, apostolics. I'm not going to keep you three hours. But I want you to know that God loves you. And it's upon his truth, his word. He's building this church. And there ain't no gate. And there is no hell that's going to stop what God is trying to do in this church, in this city. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Jesus looked at a bunch of them and said, whom do men say that I am? Come on, let's don't get no wimpy answers. Everybody started saying, oh, you're this and you're that, you're lies. And yeah. But the Bible says he finally turned to Peter and says, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. <laughs> Some of y'all need to quit trying to beat around the bush. Somebody asked, what church do you go to? I go to Souls Harbor. Well, what do you believe? I believe in one God. I'm a tongue-talking, holy rolling, born again, heaven-bound believer in the liberating power of Jesus' name. Oh, that's right. I'm not hey, hey, afraid to say who I am. Hmm. It was this understanding and this knowledge that Peter had that the church was going to be built. Peter, out of all the 12 and all those there, took charge. He said, you're the Christ. Oh, I feel this in the Holy Ghost now. He said, you're not the second or third of the Godhead. You are the Christ. You're the great I am that I am. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Peter knew who he was. You're the Messiah. You're the one in Isaiah 43, 10 and 11, when those scriptures said, there was no God formed before me, neither shall there be one after me, and beside me there is no Savior. Come on, Jesus. Peter knew who he was. He recognized him. Church, you have something that the world doesn't have. It's an understanding. It's a knowledge of who he really is. And because of that, we must take charge over the forces of hell that have tried to stop this church. God is bigger than every demon. I said, God is bigger than your problem. God is greater than your issues. No weapon formed against you. I said, there is no weapon formed against you that can hurt you. That's right. Why? Because I have taken charge, amen, over every force of hell through my prayers, through my days of fasting, through my worship. We heard it quoted this morning. He inhabits the praises of his people. When we praise him, Something happens when we begin to worship him like you're doing tonight. Something takes place. Every spirit that has been fighting some of you, you're taking charge over it. You're saying no more. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to have church like never before. And over these next few weeks, I believe if you'll take charge and you'll trust in him. Oh, come on now. If you'll do what Jesus says and your pastor leads you to, something Good is going to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Raise your hands right now. Somebody raise your hands and worship him. Woo! Aha, shatarabo, katayarabo. 
Yes, in the name of Jesus, we're taking authority. We're taking dominion over the forces that have come against us. Oh, come on, Souls Harbor. Take dominion. Take liberty to defeat the enemy that's been fighting you. Somebody got to take charge. Someone has to declare tonight. Somebody has to tell the devil, oh no, not anymore. I'm going to pray for my pastor. Devil, no more. Devil, you're not going to work my pastor over anymore or my pastor's wife. No, I'm going to take charge. I'm going to take dominion over the devil and the spirits that are trying to destroy, amen, the man of God in my life. Don't just sit there and have a do-nothing attitude. We need to stand up and lift up our voices. We need to become dynamic. We need to become convincing. We need to become forceful, strong, aggressive, and firm. Oh, I feel this tonight. We need to let every demon of hell know that we are here. How? By our praise and our worship and the things we do throughout the week for God.